everyone felt the hard work. It's hard work, you know, working at a startup, trying to build a massive company for a massive need. Like what I'd like to say is that when we came into API security, um, we were already like, we had to move really, really fast if we wanted to be relevant to that problem, because that, that problem was going to explode soon. And so I told the team from day one, like, hey, we don't have a choice. Like we could choose another market and then our work would be easier. Uh, but we can do it now. Like API security is, it is really ready for us at this moment in time. Let's go for it. We're going to bust our ass, but we're going to be a really fast, you know, unicorn success, anything that comes with it. And this is really what we did it. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by J Ventures, a community driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leomitech, sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Opus Labs, Synergy Global, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, Birthright Excel, Serona Partners, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Today, I'm with Shai Levy, co-founder and CTO of No Name Security. Shai was born in Ramat Gan, and from a very young age, he learned to adapt to challenging life situations. He paved the way for the 8200 after studying physics and computers in high school and hurried to finish his matriculation in physics in 10th grade. From the Sisyphean classifications to the specific section to which he was admitted in the army, which lasted seven months, he no longer recoiled. There he met Oz, and even then they had signed together on a project that won them a Source of Life award after they managed to convince their commander to promote a project that initially encountered opposition and gained recognition for thinking outside the box. After his military service, he moved between startups and large companies when his last job was at Facebook. About two years ago, he took part in the establishment of a no-name security that provides cyber solutions for APIs. Shai Levy, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you for joining me from Tel Aviv. How are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing better having this episode now. No-name security is... You know, it's a name that pretty much every person in the tech scene uh, in Israel and in probably much, much beyond Israel knows and understands. You're working on, on a problem that really surfaced in the last, I think, 10, 15 years pretty dramatically. Um, you know, looking at security, looking at, at, at APIs, looking at the way that security needs to, to be adapted to this new era of, of collaborations and integrations, both internally within organizations and outside, and, and outside of the organizations. Um, with a, an amazing company that I think you have about 300 employees, if I'm not mistaken, That's and right. probably already not updated, and obviously with with a remarkable unicorn status, which which really is only interesting to say that you're doing something very interesting. Uh, and so I'm excited to unpack that in the next 20 minutes and hear a little bit about your perspective. And and Shai, before we even get to No Name, I, I want to understand you a little bit better because you have a really interesting journey also within your army service and the formation of, of No Name. So tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Oh, uh, you want me to start in the army or you want me to start uh, before? Like, well, where do you want us to start? I want you to take me back as early as is meaningful for you about the about how you got to No Name Security. Um, yeah, I think Unit 8200 is a good, a good place to start. Um, that's essentially where I started my professional career, um, uh, which is kind of interesting, right? Because we started our professional career in the army, but yeah. I'll, um, so yeah, I served in Unit 8200. Um, I've served four years of various cybersecurity roles. Um, you know, I've did, I've done, initially I did a course as part of my training. So you start by doing a programming course and then you get into the actual unit. Um, yeah, various cybersecurity roles from research to development to, you know, being on the offensive side, being on the defensive side, pretty interesting stuff. Um, mm -hmm. This is also where I met us, obviously. So that's another important milestone. Uh, we both served in the same department. Uh, we had an overlap of about two years. Oz was uh, released two years before me, uh, but we did have an overlap. Um, after my army service, um, I had quite an interesting journey. Uh, I've lived in Berlin for roughly six months. Uh, yeah, uh, I met my wife there. Actually, I met my wife while still wow. being in the army service. 
Um, so after I was released, I, I kind of moved there. Um, so I was in Berlin for roughly six months. Then I traveled the world a bit. So I traveled South America and only then I came back to Israel. That was already 216, I guess. And that's when I started kind of, you know, getting into the industry, um, which initially was the ad tech world. So I came into the ad tech world, um, various different roles from startups to larger companies. Hold on. Yeah. You know, names you would know, probably Iron Source is a name you would know. So I worked for Iron Source. Mm -hmm. um, my last position before no name was Facebook. You could say this is also mm -hmm. ad tech. It's not exactly ad tech, but I, I also worked <laughs> for Facebook. Um, yeah. And then, and then no name. Now, when, when you're looking back at your army service with Oz, and I know that you've gotten to work on some very meaningful projects, winning the, the source of life, uh, prize that, that experience working with Oz back then, what, what was that? What was, were you thinking already about, you know, startups and what you're going to do later on in the industry? Was, was there any room for that thought or were you, you know, really heads down in your work and, and only later on it was like, oh yeah, there's this guy that I worked with that I might want to work with again. Um, I always, always had something on my own that I'm working on. Um, at any point in, in my life, but any job that I had, I always had something that I'm working on as part of it. Um, like a side from my main job. So I also had it during my army mm -hmm. service. Uh, I always knew that it would come to the point where I'll build, like I'll build my own company. It would, I knew it. I, I basically just knew it. Uh, Oz was a great partner to do it with. Uh, I think we both kind of felt that we have similar thinking and we both knew that we want to build something together. Um, 2020, when we started, was really the ideal time for us to start because I, you know, I left Facebook basically and Oz was leaving his role. And so, you know, we came together. Incredible. And so you're coming together and, and I, after, you know, a lot of really interesting experiences that, that obviously that it, it, it really sounds like they, they played a, a big role into the formation of no name. And, and we, we don't have enough time to get into that now, but, but it is something that fascinates me. This idea of how your previous experiences are at the end shaping in ways we understand or don't understand, you know, what we do today. What, what is sort of your understanding about the market? as you're looking at security, cybersecurity, and APIs? Well, who, who, what, so the, the VC that we started working with is CyberStarts of Gilly. Uh, so mm -hmm. th they have this process called the Sunrise, where it doesn't matter which idea you come in through the door with, you're going to fly and meet with CISO Network off that venture capital and talk to them about the problem. See whether the problem that you had in mind is actually the problem that they think is important to solve at this moment in time. And so actually we did have a certain idea around this world of APIs, uh, but we weren't settled yet. We weren't, we didn't know yet how mm. does the solution, how is the solution going to look like? What exactly is the pain point? So we flew with open mind. We met with dozens of CISOs and we came back with the conclusion that API security is a big problem. The current solutions that were available in the market does not answer the need and that they're willing, like the customers are actually willing to pay in order to solve that big pain that they have. And so that was really important, uh, step in our journey, right? This, this is what help this, what, this is what helps help knowing to shape its solution. Uh, because without it, you know, we might have just been shooting in the dark. Right. I mean, and then, you know, there's the whole ideation process and then you have different organizations and and obviously, Gilly is, is amazing, and Cyberstars is amazing. You re what what is the the understanding that you reach after these meetings with the CISOs? What do you really understand about about the world of APIs? You know, more more tangibly about you know how can we actually go about and sure. and provide something that is good for these sure. CISOs? So, uh, what we understood is that the CISOs are dealing with fragmented network, which leads to the fact that they don't know where their APIs are. And they're dealing with very mm -hmm. fast development velocity, much faster than the security velocity, which leads to the fact that they don't know mm -hmm. what those APIs are doing. So they don't know where they are. They don't know what they're doing. And they can even tell you that they're, they're important. They know that they are important. They know that they're dealing with critical pipelines. The combination of all three of those immediately translate to the fact that this is going to be a major attack vector. 
going to be very profitable for mm -hmm. the cybersecurity attackers to, to abuse that. And so we came down to that conclusion that we got to help them understand where they are. We got to help them understand what they're doing. And we help, got to help them stop actual attackers from being able to abuse their ABIs. So that's kind of the final conclusion that we came, came up with. Now, it sounds to me that, you, that you're entering this and it, it, you're not really, you're, you're not looking now to, at this point, you're not looking to validate the problem. You, you, are, can, you have a conviction that there's this deep problem and you pretty much know that as long as you really execute well on it, it'll work, right? I mean, people will, will buy it. This is something that is so critical that now it comes down to your right, execution. Right. And, I, and I have to say, though, when you do go around and meet with customers, uh, it, it's actually a feedback that we got pretty early on from Gilly. The most important skill that you need to have is listen. You got to listen and you have to, like, it's sometimes really subtle. It's not like they'll come out and tell you, hey, guy, security is my biggest problem. It's not going to be like that. You really have to figure it out from the words that they're saying and how they're saying it, is it actually a big problem? Are they willing to pay for it? Is it really a big pain that they have? And at this moment in time, when we came back, we were convicted that, yes, this is a major problem. Yes, they will be willing to pay for it. Even if some of them weren't at this moment in time, we knew that they're going to get there because there was enough traction. There was enough, like we felt like this is it. Like that's the right idea. And we went for it. Right. I love it. I think you're touching on an interesting point here. You know, I think that, you know, I'm imagining as a founder, you have this idea that you want to go and validate and all you're really looking for is to finally hear somebody say, this is the reason why I, I don't right. sleep at night, right? You're just waiting for that spark because that gives you a, a legitimacy for stopping this crazy process and continuing to the actual execution, which is, you know, what right. we also live for, right? And so I, I love that intentionality of, you know, I'm not looking for that that sentence i'm looking to really listen and understand and get that conviction that this is what they need now you're the the chief technology officer about to embark on executing on a technology that you know is going to be integrated in companies and 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 protect critical infrastructure what what is sort of your thinking process as you're designing the strategy for no name as a company on the technology so, side from day one um my intention was to be very customer focused. So we are super, super, super customer focused. Everything we do is with high interaction with the customer, a lot of friction with customers. We're not just developing in, in a vacuum. So that was really what led our strategy. So we're really customer focused. Um, we really like to say we're customer focused. We're pedal to the metal. So we're really working as fast as we can. Um, while keeping this high friction with customers. So always discussing with customers, always beating the market. And this is kind of the strategy that, that led us. So if a customer at, is asking for something, our answer would probably always be yes. Um, and we would always execute on it as fast as we can. That, that's really what led us. We weren't like, um, you know, we didn't come out with our set of ideas and put it in. It was really a lot of, um, uh, this short loop, this short feedback loop uh, with the customers that, that built the product as it is, to be honest. And, and do you, how, how do you know whether to, you know, whether your customers are, are enough of, a, of an example that they represent, you know, the industry, because at the end, you, you, you can't take feedback from a hundred different companies. You want to sort of focus and say, okay, this is a representative of the greater picture of what I'm trying to build. So how do you actually know whether that's you're right a, in that direction? That's a great direction? question. So we, do, so we do have cybersecurity background, right? We're not clueless. Like myself and Anz, we did cybersecurity in the past. We had a certain idea of what we're coming into. Um, so if we were clueless, it would be much more difficult. But as we knew the market, we could distinguish between like, hey, this is actually a big representative and this is the noise. Like, because you do have to make some distinction. Um, but in, in the... There was a lot in there that, you know, doing it just by ourselves wouldn't, wouldn't have led us that way. So it was maybe the customer feedback, but also, yeah, we do have to separate between the noise and the, the, what's actually important, right? Right. So what I'm hearing here is that the, there was actually a really important right. piece here, which is your own background and saying, you know, while we, so we were, we have background to be able to distinguish the noise and to actually 
come up with a lot of these conclusions ourselves, but our ability to integrate our own background and this short feedback loop and ask those meaningful questions, that is really the game changer here. Now, on, on a more leadership level internally within the organization, it's not just about the customers, you're right. also growing a team. And, and how, how many engineers now are you on the, on the R&D side? We have So building an organization really from, from one, you to, to 100, what is sort of you know, the big milestones that you've experienced in the growth of this company that's, personally that's as a leader? That's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. Um, milestones, um, there were a few. I think the first big milestone was the, the initial deployment in a large you know, enterprise customer. That was a big milestone. Um, you know, then starting to see the sales org really scaling up, you know, and this collaboration between sales and R&D starting to tick, you know, starting to work by itself. We're all not, you know, in the loop. So that, 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 that's a very bizarre feeling. It's like it, start, it's like it starts walking by itself. You know, this is a weird thing because in the beginning you're holding everything with your own hands and suddenly, you know, it becomes its own living, breathing organism. That, that was another major milestone. Um, I think the unicorn was another major milestone for the entire company because we worked so hard for, you know, two years to get to that point. So it was almost like this huge celebration from within, you know, like, wow, we worked so hard that I can't believe we finally made it. So that was another key milestone. Those are really big milestones that I felt as a leader. Other than that, you know, everyone felt the hard work. It's hard work, you know, working at a startup, trying to build a massive company for a massive need. Like what I'd like to say is that when we came into API security, um, we were already like, we had to move really, really fast if we wanted to be relevant to that problem because that, that problem was going to explode soon. And so I told the team from day one, like, hey, we don't have a choice. Like we could choose another market and then our work would be easier, uh, but we can do it now. Like API security is, it is really ready for us at this moment in time. Let's go for it. We're going to bust our ass, but we're going to be a really fast, you know, unicorn success, anything that comes with it. And this is really what we did it. We worked really, really hard, but not because like we wanted to work hard. It's like the market pushed us to do that. Otherwise we would become irrelevant really. It's such a cool distinction when you're saying that you're understanding that you know, you, you're saying, guys, this, this is the situation. You know, we, we, we have this understanding. The only way to really succeed in the situation is if we go all out. So we have to make a decision whether we are now ready to go all out on this, knowing that every hire we make is going to be somebody who understands this notion of where we're headed. Or we can choose that if we want to have a little bit of an easier time, we don't want to bust our asses every weekend and 24-7, then we can go to another market. And but that maturity of understanding of this is what we're signing up for, I think that I think that is something that's really, really cool. Now, on a personal level, transitioning also from engineering, you're talking about the this the magic of of having this thing become a breathing organism. What is it like for you as you're sort of distancing yourself more and more from the core, right? From this from the lines of code, you're now managing close to a hundred people. What what is that? experience um, personally it was, for you like it was really interesting experience though i have I had to say from day one i kept having close loop with the customers so then after i think half a year almost i almost transitioned fully to being really customer facing so all the important like i was the most important technical aspect of the company like as a cto so when you need to technically sell something it's going to be the cto that is there so all the initial discussions um, especially the technical discussions with customers were led by me. And so uh, I found myself like almost naturally going to the spot where I couldn't do both. I can't deal with the actual coding and find myself in front of customers at the same time. Like there wasn't enough hours of the, of the day. And so almost naturally, I found myself distancing. There wasn't a, po a moment in time in which I said, okay, guys, bye-bye, um, you code this. It was just natural that I couldn't, I just couldn't get to it. Um, and that's kind of how it happened. I, Do you miss yeah, it? Sorry. Uh, well, Do yes, you miss the coding? I, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to have at least, I don't know, one or two commits in, in a quarter. 
Oh, but other than that, but other than they're really small, like, let's say they're really, they're late, but at least I see my name and uh, at least I get to see my name and then the commit line. But yeah, other than that, yeah, but, but I didn't miss it because there's something about like coding, like, you know, creating, like this passion to create, uh, coding is really a cool way to, to, to achieve that. But yeah, I miss it, but I'm, I'm fine, you know. Fantastic. Well, well, Shia, you know, you're, you're building such an amazing organization. Um, and I think it really just represents and I, and I, the, this whole theme of this conversation, I think it's the, the intentionality of understanding, you know, both the intentionality of, of we're going on this mission to first ideate and to find what we're looking for with some of the best people in the world, with your co-founder Oz, with your, with, with Gili. But then once you find it, you're again continuing with that same intentional, in, intentional mindset of saying, okay, now that we've, we understand what we need to do, we can actually see what, is going to, what it's going to take from us. And are we ready and are we mature enough internally to go about this exact mission that we're on? And if we succeed, then in two years, we'll be a unicorn. And that's exactly what happened. So Shai, I really want to thank you for the, the inspiration and the, the awesome 20 minutes. I loved it. I learned a lot. And uh, best Thank of you. luck Thank with No Name much. and Thanks. stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks.